there, Shauna Karish coming to you from England. So I'm in the UK. I'm on the road with Ask Shauna, and I'm actually in Lincolnshire at Equilibre for Horses. So it's Joe Hughes' place, for those of you who may know her from Facebook. Anyway, so this question comes from Linda, and Linda says, I saw you on Equine VIP today. That's a little television show, uh, internet television show. Anyway, I have a mare that I'm close to, tr uh, to giving up on. I got her a couple of years ago and soon found out she was extremely frightened of cows. Since then, I have followed natural horsemanship training, and she's actually very good when I work with her in the ring. If I try to take her out on the trail, she gets very panicky to the point of being dangerous. I honestly think she went through a traumatic accident of some sort. Um, what leads me to believe this is she, she has divots in her neck, signs of some type of muscle injury on her hip and scar on her eye. I can't get any history. I like to trail ride and want to help her out with my other horse. I want to take her out with my other horse, uh, but she is just too unpredictable on trail. Can you help? I'm desperate. Linda, yes, for sure, and I'm so glad you're not giving up on her because it's, it, it's really hard, but we can get through these things, and sometimes it's just not that hard to get through them, but but through traditional, what we've known as traditional horsemanship, and even natural horsemanship is a form of, um, of traditional horsemanship. You know, it's still using the same principles within the behavior paradigm. And she, uh, sometimes we just get to stuck spots. But by using the positive reinforcement, we're actually going to a very different place. And when we change... Um, this mental place, oh, I, I could talk for a week about this part, but when we change this mental place, we're going to ask her, we're going to give her choice and say, hey, you can do it, not do it. What do you think? What do you want to do? And she'll start to face her own fears. So instead of her feeling like I don't have a choice, I want to panic or I don't know what to do and everything's scary and I'm not sure I can get away from it, she's going to start, we're going to give her a new brain patterns, you know, to, to, to go through and to, dinner's ready, so I'll be going in a second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, so what we're going to do is, is give her new, new tools for dressing things. And by using positive reinforcement, I mean, really think about it right now. What's in it for her? I mean, why, what is in it for her to try and face something that's on the trail that she finds frightening? There's not a lot in it. But as we start putting something in it that she values by utilizing the positive reinforcement, she starts to think, I want to do this, but we have to start small. So where I'm going to recommend you start is by utilizing the positive reinforcement in, in doing the, um, I would use a clicker. I think you can use whatever you want as a bridge signal. Um, you can go see, there's a little free video I have on YouTube called um, Getting Your Horse Off, or actually it's better if you see it on my blog because there's more information with it. Um, so on my blog, I think it's called Getting Your Horse Off to the Right Start for Clicker Training. Go there and you will, uh, it shows you kind of some basics of how to get started with the bridge and the target. I think in your situation, it's going to help you. And I'm not, I'm not a big salesperson because I, you, everybody knows I put lots and lots of free stuff out there. But in this situation, there is a series I did called um, "Despooking Your Horse." It's a six-part series. It took me about a year to make, honestly. And it's a six-part, um, six DVD set, and it's um, "Despooking Your Horse: Building Boldness and Confidence." And I think that that would be a great tool for you and her to work through some of those exercises. So if you really want to go there, that's where I recommend. I'm not a big salesman and I actually get kind of uncomfortable doing it because it's there if you want it or not. But it is there and the, the beginning video DVD, you can train your horse to do, video, to do anything. If you can't train your horse to do video. That's what I said. You can train your horse to do anything. It's an excellent video. Filmed it at John and Beezy Madden's 20 years ago, uh, but it's an excellent tool still for getting started. So those two would be a really um, good way to go. But in essence, what I want you to start, so I'll give you a little kind of premise and little exercises you can work through and, and, and that will help you with, with this. So that's if you want to kind of really continue on. But to give you a sample, a little try, actually, now I'm just going to refer you to more videos. I think there's one out there, um, and it's a... Dang, what exactly is it called? It, it's on my YouTube channel, and it has a horse named William. I'll have to get back to you on that, because I don't know if it's blog. It was despookingyourhorse.com. If you go to despookingyourhorse.com, I think you may find a little three-part series that shows a, a little exercise I did with him with milk jugs. And he was afraid. He was a very, very fearful horse. He, you know, he's always, always afraid of everything. I mean, it was just his thing. 
So we had, he's not my horse. He's just a horse I worked with. And I took milk jugs and did the bridge conditioning, the target training, then did the milk jug exercise. And that was the beginning of getting him to start to make new decisions about things. And I think that would be an excellent way to go. It'd be better than me just talking about it forever. So go to despookingyourhorse.com, all one word, and I think you'll find it there. If for some reason you don't find it there, go search my YouTube channel, search my uh, blog, but that will be an excellent tool. And there's little exercises that we can build up their confidence. Because as we put something in it for them, as they start viewing new objects, what they do, instead of looking and seeing so in the very beginning, at this point, she sees things and thinks everything's a worry to me. So pretty soon, you take something that you want to stay below threshold. So you don't want to take something that's entirely too spooky. That's advanced. You get there. But you want to take something that's just mildly spooky, something that may just have her go, ooh, what's that? And teach her to get brave about that. And then pretty soon, her threshold's going to get higher and higher and higher and higher. And she's going to get bolder and braver. And you're going to see her going... I want to actually go see that new object, and, and it will be amazing. There's a story that is, uh, st it was long ago, from when I wrote my book a billion years ago, a gal read the book, and, and she used the training, because she had a horse who had broken, she's a horse she loved, she was an Arabian, but every year, because she was in the Northeast, and she'd be on the trail, and on the trail, everything would be, or in her barn during the winter, everything's predictable, and she's pretty good. She'd go out on the trail, and everything is scary and alive. So what she would do, every year on the trail, pretty much, she would get hurt because her horse would just spook. She had broken ribs, collarbones, wrists, and, but she loved her horse, and she was dedicated to keeping her and moving on. So what she did just through the winter, she did some of those little de-spooking exercises, just little stuff, even just hang something in the barn, like on a chair on the back, you know, put a, hang a jacket in the barn, and then just walk her by it. First, she's going to bow all by, like, I don't want to get near that thing, and ignore that, and then she'd turn around and come back, and if she's a little bit better, a more, little more relaxed, because relaxation's part of it, she'd click and reinforce. So as she's approaching that object, so that's coming to, because if we were forced leaving, she'll want to get away faster. So as she's coming to, a little bit more relaxed, click and reinforce, and then I'd have her build up until she's just walking by, no big deal. Next day, do another object in a different place, or put that object in another place, and do these exercises under saddle, and build from there, but in her safest place, you know, do it in the arena where she's fine, you know, and then building up from there. And then as... Pretty soon, she's built up to bigger and bigger objects. Well, she worked through this through the winter. Here comes the springtime. She goes out with her bum bag, you know, going out. So she's got her bum bag with her treats. She's got a clicker on her riding stick. And off she goes off into the wild blue yonder. And she said she's out on the trail. And it's springtime. Here she goes. And a partridge flew out of the brush. And her horse didn't spook and run. All she did was splay all four feet. And so she clicked because she's like, oh, my gosh, that was such a better decision. They're still going to get startled. But what they do with that startle is where the choice comes in. So they're still going to get startled. And so she got, he got started, just splayed her four feet but stayed put. So she clicked to reinforce her. So she's eating from saddle. And then the other partridge flew out. And all she did was turn back and look at the woman like, are you going to feed me? <laughs> now, we couldn't prepare precisely for partridges flying out, but we could, pre we could change her response to new objects and how she, what she did in that, that instantaneous reflex. And she made a new choice about it, and she stayed put, and she started learning that things are good through that classic conditioning. Anyway, that's a subject I can go on and on and on about. But I, you know, I'm, if you want to learn more, go there. Look for those videos. Those D, or the, you can go to the DVDs. Those are for, for sure. But look, you can look for the free things online and, um, and look for despooking.com. We had some technical issues with that for a little bit, but I think we got them resolved. So that's why I'm a little him hauling weird about it. But let me know, and those will be a great way to get started. But anyway, so I, uh, I look forward to hearing your progress because I know that you're going to have great, a great response and a good, uh, you're going to have good things coming back to you. So I have to go eat dinner now. <laughs> anyway, so if you or anybody else has questions as you go along through your progress, uh, please don't hesitate to get a hold of me at askshauna.com or shaunacarish.com. All right, Linda, good luck with your new mare or with your little mare and enjoy getting your horse on target. Until next time, bye.